Today, we're going to cover something absolutely critical for every shrimp keeper, and that is the life cycle of your dwarf shrimp, like Neocaridina and Caridina. Wait, 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 wait. Don't big shrimp just make little shrimp? That's partially true. But understanding some of the key details of the shrimp life cycle can be really useful. With this information, you'll have a much better idea of how to sex your shrimp, how mating actually occurs, how to deal with breeding problems, and you'll get a good idea of what really is normal behavior for shrimp. Because some of what we see during mating could be concerning for a new shrimp keeper especially. So we wanna make sure that you don't panic at the wrong time or you do panic at the right time. This information is just so important and helpful as a shrimp keeper at any level. I can personally guarantee that you are going to learn something brand new in this video, whether you are just starting out as a shrimp keeper or a more experienced one as well. Let's start this life cycle at the adult stage. Shrimp become sexually mature anywhere from 50 to 90 days after being born. You have this range because shrimp develop at different speeds depending on temperature. So cooler temperatures lead to slower growth and vice versa for warmer temperatures. This temperature dependence comes into play at every stage of a shrimp's life cycle. Shrimp only become identifiable as male or female once they grow up enough to reach sexual maturity, which again depends on temperature. For females, their identifying features are their ovaries, which are visible if shrimp have an even slightly transparent shell. These ovaries are found right between the head and the abdomen, and they're kind of triangular, making them look like a horse saddle, which is why females with developed ovaries are said to be saddled. Now, some shrimp keepers might see that saddle developing and be like, oh my God, what is this dark growth here? Why, why is it green? Ovaries can be a variety of different colors from white to green to yellow or even blue, depending on the color of eggs kept in them. It's still not clear exactly what causes eggs to be different colors, but it likely does have something to do with diet. Mature females who have not yet had babies have an abdomen or skirt that is only slightly rounded. This difference becomes much more visible after the first clutch of babies. We'll get into why that is in just a bit. As for males, you can see they have a very straight underside to their abdomen, and that makes it more triangular shaped overall. One key difference between males and females that you can only see at the proper angle is the development of the appendix masculina, or the male sex organ. The second pair of pleopods, or swimmerettes, develop slightly differently from the other four pairs, with a unique structure used to deliver their spermatophore, or sperm packet. You can actually see this yourself if your shrimp are up against the glass and showing their underside, making it easy to identify which shrimp are males or not, at least if they're of breeding age. Once the male has fully developed appendix masculina and the female has fully developed ovaries, then it's time for a little bit of a funny business, shall we say, if you, if you knew what I mean. I, d I don't know how to approach this. It's sex, okay? They're gonna bang. Let's just get it out there. We're all adults, right? Pro probably, maybe, I, I don't know. Maybe you're shrimp. Anyway, the mating process starts with the female releasing pheromones into the water, which are these chemicals that males are attracted to. When the pheromones hit their antenna, males go wild, frantically swimming around the tank trying to find the female, a process that we call the zoomies. This can be scary as a new shrimp keeper because all of a sudden you have a bunch of these shrimp swimming around in your tank, seemingly stressed, but if you can identify males and females and can see that most of the shrimp swimming around are males, then it means a female is about to molt and is not a reason to panic. If you have both males and females swimming around, then that's a good sign there's a problem in your tank. There's likely a source of stress that you should be looking for, whether that's bad water parameters from rotting food, or if there's a new plant that went in that unfortunately had pesticides on it, then you're gonna have to start doing water changes. And so being able to identify again when you might have a problem versus when you don't have to worry is really important here. Another thing to consider is that if there are too many male shrimp in the tank, then all of these males swimming around and approaching the female that's getting ready to molt can cause her stress. Sometimes the excited males can even injure her and cause death. That's why it's important to have a balance of males and females, or better yet, more females than males. Let's hear from a breeder on this topic. The males have to be very, very nice. Mostly my ratio is five males to as many females as I want. Uh, ranging from 30 to 60 females. Assuming the female molts successfully, the next step is mating. The exact time between molting and mating can vary a little bit. In research settings, when they have a small, bare tank, it can happen within about 10 seconds after molting. In a natural setting, I've seen the males running around chasing the female for anywhere from 5 to 10 minutes after she actually molts. There is a range within when that female is ready to mate. It also means that if you want shrimp to breed, 
then you don't want such a large tank that the males can't find the female in time to mate. Here, you can actually see the process in action. See how the males are following around a newly molted female that's displaying those pheromones. She seems to evade their advances for a while, and then one male eventually does approach her successfully, positions himself below the female, what we're going to call shrimply style. You'll see that here in just a second. After that, you've got this kind of <laughs> goofy shaking that occurs, after which the male has deposited his spermatophore in the female stelicum and swims off, completing its duties and moving on with his life, just like my father did. Something really interesting that I've never seen or heard reported is what happens right before they actually mate in that video. Let's replay that really quickly and take a look at what happens as the male is approaching the female. The female had been running away from any males that approached her, but eventually stayed still long enough for one to get close, at which point the male and female rubbed antennae together briefly before the mating process began. Was this random? Was this something where the female was verifying the quality of the male? Was this part of a sort of like mating dance or ritual? I don't know, but it's really interesting to think about how female selection might actually impact shrimp breeding. I'll keep you updated if any new research comes out on the topic. Anyway, after the male deposits a spermatophore, the female goes into hiding. Once she feels safe, she moves the eggs out of her ovaries, through the thelicum and sperm packet to fertilize them, and finally onto her swimmerettes. This process partially explains why the female needs to molt before mating. If she didn't, then her body might not be flexible enough to move the eggs through it. An additional reason is that as she puts eggs into her swimmerettes, she wants that space to be able to expand so she can hold more. That expansion mainly seems to happen from the second abdominal segment, which gets much larger after a female's first clutch and leads to that accentuated curve seen on a mature female shrimp. This makes sense from an evolutionary standpoint because females that can have more eggs and therefore more babies are more likely to have offspring that then pass on the trait to future generations, thereby leading that trait to become more prevalent in a population. When Neocaridina were studied, they found clutch sizes of anywhere from 20 to 60 eggs, depending on the size of the female. Older, larger females can carry more eggs, which makes them that much more valuable for breeding purposes. And now, on to egg development. Once moved onto the swimmerettes, the eggs stay there until they hatch, being held together by a sticky substance that was gathered as they passed through the female's body. During this incubation time, the female cares for these eggs by flooding her swimmerettes up and down at varying rates in a process known as fanning. It's a really cool kind of hypnotizing process. This fanning happens because doing so creates water movement around the eggs, thereby preventing infection and oxygenating them until they hatch. When eggs are within a few days of hatching, you'll notice they turn lighter and more translucent at which point you can often see black specks where the eyes are developing. It's super cool to actually get to see those eyes develop and know that you're gonna have some shrimplets soon. The exact time it takes though for these cool developments to occur, again, depends on temperature. When cherry shrimp were studied, they found eggs hatched in about 12 days when shrimp were kept at 32 degrees Celsius or 90 degrees Fahrenheit. That changed to 21 days when kept at 24 degrees Celsius or about 75 degrees Fahrenheit. If you keep them at even lower temperatures, then their hatching time can increase to 30 or more days. As a side note, Caridina, like crystal shrimp and Taiwan bees, tend to have a slightly longer incubation period than Neocaridina shrimp. Again, temperature is incredibly important for Caridina as well as Neocaridina, but don't go cranking that thermostat up just yet. In the study, at 32 degrees C, none of the babies that hatched actually survived, whereas they did at 28 and 24 degrees C. That means somewhere between 28 and 32 degrees C is the highest temperature that promotes the fastest hatching time to give you the most efficient baby production. But another thing to consider, which is overall shrimp health. At higher temperatures, a shrimp's immune function can be impaired and bacteria and fungus are growing faster. So infections and general problems with the colony are much more likely to happen. That's why a lot of shrimp beaters <laughs> That's why a lot of shrimp breeders choose a slightly lower temperature than the 28 degrees C that research study found is optimal because in a natural real world setting, infections are more likely compared to a lab setting that's much more sterile. If your goal is to give your best looking shrimp the best chance at the longest life and the most babies, then a lower temperature where they are safer is likely better. For Neocaridina, this seems to be anywhere from about 75 to 78 degrees and caridina breeders tend to keep their temperature even slightly lower at around 70 to 73 degrees. Once eggs are fully developed, then out pop little shrimplets. 
This awesome moment was shared by Rochelle Moss. Look at that little guy. After hatching, the babies look like transparent, three millimeter long versions of adults. Now, you might be surprised to learn that these shrimp babies are not perfect replicas of the adults. They appear to be, but they have a little something extra that gives them a superpower for a few extra days to help their survival. You see, despite every resource that we see online, newborn shrimp don't actually need to eat immediately. It's super strange because that goes against pretty much everything most resources online tell us. But there was a really interesting experiment that was done to demonstrate this and having this information, understanding it, and really believing it is going to help you troubleshoot your tank more effectively. So let's take a quick look at it. This experiment tested how prone juvenile neocaridina are to starvation at different stages and found that most newborn shrimp can survive without food for over six days before they start to die. During this time, they actually have a yolk sac that provides nutrition while they find a hiding place and learn to eat biofilm. This is really useful information because previously, if we were just going off of, oh, baby shrimp die if they don't have enough food. That's absolutely true after about eight to 10 days. Understanding what these time frames are means that you can diagnose the issue in your tank more effectively. For example, if your shrimplets aren't surviving from the zero to like six to eight day mark, then it's likely something other than food availability. It could be a pH swing, some sort of infection, or potentially adults aren't getting a good enough diet to create healthy babies. Now, if you're seeing shrimplets surviving up to about eight to 10 days, and then they're starting to die off, that's a good sign that your tank is healthy, the parents are likely healthy and producing healthy babies, but your tank doesn't have enough food. And so the babies are starving. You can see how you come to slightly different conclusions that might really help understand and diagnose a problem. If your shrimplets are starving, that's where a bacterial powder like Bacter AE being spread around your tank can be really helpful for shrimplet survival. To be clear, any sort of bacterial powder or even ground up food spread around the tank can help with shrimplet survival. If juveniles get enough to eat, then they'll gain weight and molt frequently. In the first 20 days of life, a shrimplet grows enough to molt six to seven times then continues to molt less and less frequently as it gets closer to adult size. Eventually, it reaches adulthood and the molting frequency drops to about one to two times a month, depending on their age. About 50 to 90 days after hatching, depending on temperature, these shrimp reach sexual maturity and are ready to start this cycle again. Something interesting to note is that by 90 days, the shrimp at lower temperatures actually had caught up in growth to those that grew faster at higher temperatures initially. The higher temperature ones grew at faster rates earlier and then slowed down, whereas the ones kept at a lower temperature grew slightly slower initially and then sped up to catch up at about 90 days. Again, this experiment was run from 75 to 90 degrees Fahrenheit. And so if you're keeping shrimp below that, growth rates may be different. So temperature is something to consider when you're breeding shrimp for fun or for profit. If you'd like to learn more about how temperature affects shrimp and whether a heater is right for your tank, then take a look at this video. For other interesting shrimp news and shrimp facts, take a look at our YouTube channel or visit shrimplyexplained.com. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great rest of your day.